Okay, welcome to Monday, March 20th, 2023, meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Steve Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz, member. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At this point, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. All right, so I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, most of the stuff on the screen is for anybody who is watching via Orca Media, um, but there will be bits of information for everybody who's on remotely. There we go. All right. So um, for anyone who is viewing this design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, to join the meeting through the internet, you can type this link into your web browser um, and it will bring you right into Zoom and I'll get a little notification to let you into the meeting room. Um, or you can call in using this phone number and when prompted, plug in this meeting ID um, and again, I'll let you into the room when I get prompted. Um, if anyone is trying to access the meeting and has problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, please make sure that your Zoom name includes both your first and last name so we know who we're speaking with. Um, and note that turning your video on is optional. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, please also keep the Zoom chat function just to troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, anything of substance should be shared um, verbally. In the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. All right, I'm going to hand everything back over to the chair. Unless anyone else has anything to offer at this point, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. And I'll second it. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Ben. Martha. Stephen. Liz, you're on mute. Liz. Okay, the agenda is approved. We can go to our first application for 5 East State Street. Owner Tim Heaney, applicant Elisa Kiparana, I believe. <laughs> Is yep, someone there? Yep. Okay. Hi. Hi. Go ahead and describe your application and sign for us. Sure. Yeah. So I am um, the new tenant at 5 East State Street. I own a company called Vermont Dog Eats, um, and it's an organic dog treat manufacturer. And um, in addition to the kitchen and production space that we've opened there, we're going to be opening a retail space up front um, this spring. Um, and so what we've applied for is a sign that's going to be um, coming out above the door on East State Street there. Um, and in the forms that I submitted, it kind of shows you the outline of the um, sign itself. So it's a two foot by two foot sign um, that would be approximately eight feet off of the sidewalk. So the standard clearance that's needed um, for that space. And um, there will be a metal bracket uh, coming out of the brick there um, right above the doorway. Um, and just for design review committee members that are here, I do have the paint chip for the sign. It's a slightly greener color than what shows up on that printout. Okay. So if anybody wants to look at it, it's uh, color is dream I can fly I can pass it around if you want to see but oh you're soft <laughs> <laughs> welcome Eric <laughs> Alyssa I noticed in your application that you said that you were project that you were anticipating putting lighting in is that correct correct yep so there would be um probably one track light just pointing up at the sign from under oh. Okay, so had you talked to Audra about the lighting yet? I don't believe so. Okay, so lights can't point up. 
they can point okay. down or lights and because this is a projecting sign yeah they do kind of backlit so it would have to point down okay yeah that's fine and the light was something that was going to be after the sign anyway I was going to be doing them simultaneously so yep so yeah but you can get if design review gives you sort of pre-approval parameters mm -hmm. then you don't necessarily have to come back here if they give you guidance on the fixture as long as what you propose later for that light comes within those bounds gotcha. then we can issue that permit without having to actually come back to the hearing okay great and and one other question i noticed that your application says something about the zutano sign do you anticipate or are you projecting that you're going to change that at all no no that was simply in reference to the other signage that's on that existing building um because in the the form it needed to it, it asked essentially what other signage was currently existing on that same building so it's around the corner from us but that Zutano sign is the only other one that's currently up there okay and you don't intend to put a sign up there as well no I'm assuming that you were looking to do lighting for a single fixture pointed at the sign aimed up East State Street as opposed to the other direction. Right. And I would recommend two, two things. Because of the snow that comes off of that roof. Mm-hmm. I would probably stay away from a gooseneck hanging out. I would put a very small, a very small, uh, like a small can uh, spotlight mm -hmm. that's mounted towards the, if you see the, the hood exhaust for the bakery, yep. I would put it on that side of the sign aiming back. And again, I would use the smallest fixture that you can find tight to the building. Mm -hmm. It's not a large sign, so it won't take much to put a flood bulb in to eliminate the sign. The right. other suggestion, and I'm not sure I see it on the application, is that the mounting bracket that mounts onto the building, the attachment needs to be in the mortar joints of the brick and not into the brick. Mm -hmm. And one suggestion that's at your option is that I saw the color you're using. If you wanted to use that same color family and go darker, the, the darker your background against the white lettering makes the sign more readable from a longer distance because of the contrast. Right. And again, that would be at your option, but it would be definitely more readable from a distance. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a good point. You also might think about putting a black line surround on the circumference of your sign. Like make a it pen look a stripe. Bit, yeah, make it look a little bit more finished. Okay. At your option. And my question goes to the lighting, which is more how you intend to get the wires to the uh, fixture. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've thought about that, if that's uh, a surface mounted conduit that's coming from somewhere or whether there's a hole being drilled through the brick or how, how that was going to work out. Yeah, that's something I'd need to um, talk through with our electrician just to get a, a better sense of how that might work. Well, and we could, I mean, we can always, she wasn't necessarily applying for the lighting for this permit. So if, yeah. if yeah. the committee really wants to see those potential solutions, the light could come back yeah. for a separate permit when they're ready. That might not be a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, cause you've got, you do have some decorative brickwork. I'm going to, Liz, do you want me to pull up a Google view of the side of the building for you so you can see as well? Uh, yes, please. Okay. I did look at the materials earlier, but. Yeah, this is something I added. So it okay. didn't quite show that I, I realized at the last minute that this wasn't a view that was in there. Um, um, and so I printed it out to bring in, but I didn't have something to send around. Where am I? There we are. So 
not the best view because of the light pole, but you've got some varied brick here. Um, and with that little bit of the, I don't remember what you call that where it's, oh, hold on. It's not sharing screen. Ha, huh. that would help, wouldn't it? I'm looking at it. I'm not showing anybody right there. So this is the door that it's going yeah. for. Um, and so there's just some, you know, how, how the, the lighting gets wired in is a question. Right. Yeah. And embedded in that question and bringing up this piece of paper is really pointing out the fact that we're interested in not having your bracket obscure the kind of uh, soldier bricks over the um, over the doorway. Right. Well, at the bottom, if the bottom of the sign has to be eight feet above right, and this the is probably street, then it's it probably can't feet. go there. You probably have to go it round where the brick changes or where it looks like the mortar changes. Yeah, so it's like a six, eight door to plus the step up. Yeah, there's a little bit of a door then, of a step. And then it's probably close to eight feet where those- You think so? Top of those bricks is. Okay. It's good for her to have it in mind anyway. Yeah. Probably nobody's mentioned that the any mounting screws should go in the mortar joints. Yep, Steve mentioned. Okay. And I assume this is being centered over the door, or is it justified right. to one side? Nope, centered over the door. Yeah. So, were there any other recommendations? Again, we we indicated a small black can light can be installed tight to the building, pointed back at the sign for illumination, close to the building as possible to avoid falling ice or snow. Applicant's option, if she chooses to use a darker color in the same color family for more contrast with the white lettering. And then again, mounting hardware to be attached in the mortar joints on the brick face. Were there any other Comments, suggestions, or recommendations? Pinstripe. Pinstripe. Oh, that's right. Option to add perimeter. Meredith, can you bring that back up? Pinstripe. Oh. <laughs> yes, I can bring it back up. <laughs> I don't think the ice and snow is an issue on that side of the building. I know it is closer to the bakery, but looking at this, this roof is... Uh, either flat or pitched the other way. Uh, let me. This way. That roof pitches down towards the sidewalk. It kind of does it both. But it doesn't have the ice and snow this. issue. It has the ice bars up top. But, oh, but this, no, but they're back know, here. Oh, but they're in the flat part. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I'm aware that the there, other roof some can come off, sidewalk. but it's not the pitch of the, if it's over the doorway. Yeah, it's here. Know, it's not the pitch. Yeah. So, I mean, they could maybe do a gooseneck there, Warren. You could. There's still stuff that comes off of mm -hmm. there. I mean, if you get a, you know, you get a heavy snow. <laughs> like we did not that long ago. You get, <laughs> you and, and it starts to melt. It does come over the edge. <laughs> I mean, you could use a gooseneck, but be prepared to replace it. <laughs> and over <laughs> um you noted also that the, the um bracket would be above the soldier course mm, yeah. that brickwork right above the door mm -hmm. the vertical bricks yeah yeah did you want to put that in as a recommendation she, that the bracket she, for the sign needs to be above the soldier course above the door it we could although at eight feet it will be anyway but I can okay, just to be sure. I just I can just reinforce that. Thank you. Thank you, Liz.
Okay, that's added as well. So we again we added the the there's an option to add a perimeter pin stripe around the sign in the same color as the lettering, and then again the mounting bracket should be installed above the brick soldier course. And I can go through, there's a set of criteria that applies to the sign, and I can go through that criteria. Size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review overlay district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. This location is acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building. The attachment and location of the sign is acceptable. In masonry buildings, fasteners shall be in mortar joints acceptable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. Sign support structure shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs on facades of historic buildings shall not conflict with or damage the building's architectural integrity or cover or impact character defining architectural features acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs mounted on all building facades shall be designed with appropriate housing, shielding, and photometrics to ensure that there is appropriate lighting levels and illumination that focuses on the sign panels exclusively. Acceptable. All in favor of the application with the recommendations and options, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha, I'm a yes. Steven says yes. Liz, yes. So the application is accepted unanimously. Um, so Elisa, I will scan this recommendation form and email it to you because they did make some recommendations um, that would be like permit conditions. As long as you're okay with those, I'm going to have you sign it and then send that um, signature page back to us. And then we'll be able to issue the permit for the sign. Um, when you're ready to do the light, get back in touch with Audra and me because we'll have to do an administrative site plan report. And then depending on how the wiring's run and everything, um, you may have to come back to design review for that, but we'll see what, what ends up happening with the electrician. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. And good luck with your new business. Thank you so much. We can move on to the next application. 489 Main Street, owner Doug Nettie. Applicant, is it Jagger or Jaeger? Nettie. Uh, it's pronounced Jagger. Like Mick Jagger is the easiest way oh, to remember. Okay. <laughs> it, Sorry. Tricky spelling. No, it's not you. It's my entire life. It's been like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your flexibility and describe your application for us. Sure. So we have a new tenant. Uh, looking to occupy part of the first floor of 89 Main Street. Uh, part of our fit up uh, is going to include an ex new exterior entrance to help uh, uh, people go in and out of the building. Uh, we're looking to, uh, we're planning for the future. We're having this entrance have two doors, one uh, if you go up, one on the left, one on the right, so it can uh, access multiple spaces. Uh, so in five, 10 years should this tenant leave and we want to subdivide it again, it, uh, that space can be broken into smaller sections and we can uh, bring even more retail life to East Day Street. Uh, the, the space itself is uh, a couple steps up in, and then inside the building. So we'll be building a uh, insulated uh, cube essentially inside the building. Uh, we'll be pouring new footings, cutting concrete, and uh, pouring some new stairs and then adding one recessed light for safety and visibility at the top of the inlet. 
So this has an alcove, sort of like the tattoo parlor does? Yep, that's exactly what we're trying to uh, copy, essentially. Same idea, uh, to just allow another way into the building. Uh, for retail especially, it's it's challenging for some people to go into the main entrance, the down the hallway, and find where you want to go. Uh, and we think just long term for the building, it'd be great to have a new exterior entrance, which just gives uh, even more life to that street and then just draws more people into the building. Do you anticipate any signage at this point? Um, I, I do anticipate uh, New Horizons. I believe they have applied for a permit to uh, do interior construction, uh, putting a sign above that entryway. Uh, so that's for one door. Then the other door, actually, uh, Marigold is looking to expand a bit. So we see them taking uh, the other portion of the inside to where that door leads. Um, so if you go up and then take the door to the right, that'll lead to Marigold. I don't know if they would add another sign or just keep their primary entrance and use that as a secondary entrance. Mm -hmm. But that, that hasn't been signed yet. So uh, we're not still not sure who's taking the other space. Yeah, we haven't heard from, I don't think we've gotten a sign permit from New Horizons yet. That's, I think, pending when they yeah, they're still exactly how they want to do it. And they're still in the early new business, early stage of, uh, you know, work inside. I know that. So I know they're, I think the permit's pending from what I've talked with uh, Gavin about. Everybody's looking at the at the plan, so. Yep, I, I see that. <laughs> and if you have questions, feel free to. I, I can pull things up on the screen if somebody needs to look at something closer. In in general, I think it's good to break up the facade of that building and provide more track attractions down East State Street. Mm -hmm. A couple of questions: Could you explain exactly where the wood siding is going? Yep. So. As, as you look into the building, you're going to have a uh, brick uh, directly in front of you. And then uh, uh, but next to the aluminum storefront doors is where the wood siding is going to be. It's just going to add a nice little accent there um, and just kind of break up all the brick and add a nice uh, refined feel was our kind of goal. Well, the, uh, the other question I have is about matching the existing brick have you tried to find brick to match yet we haven't gone that far into matching it uh but getting as close as possible is definitely a goal of ours and matching the matching the mortar also is a goal of ours um what i'm gonna what i haven't done but what i plan on doing is going the entrance to marigold was an add-on later uh, and I was looking at that and they did a pretty good job of matching the brick and then also matching the mortar. Uh, we're going to try to save as much brick as possible from the from the exterior and try to reuse that. But um, there, there may be uh, a need to use more, to, to make more and buy more brick. We're just not entirely sure quite yet. Because the existing brick has been down there for about 40 years. Yep. And uh, I can't believe that building's that old, but that's all right. Hey, uh, if you can't match the brick and they then it abuts with the old brick, if you're going to be able to see that very easily. And I suggest putting some kind of a divider in mm -hmm. the two ki different kinds of brick are not woven together. Uh, yeah, that's a great thought. Or uh, just whatever have a course of bricks that divide the two uh i think you're going to re really have a hard time matching that using the old bricks would be great yep i think we're going to try to save as much as possible and if if it's not possible so if you have a straight on view there uh, we might have the you know we might have that back wall as you walk up those stairs uh continue that wood accent if we run out of brick it could be a potential a solution yep. for us go mm -hmm. let me go go try and go to where that view was of what the new
How long do you anticipate that the construction will take? Uh, we're still in the early stages of just getting some quotes for the concrete cutting, but once we move, uh, I don't expect taking longer than a month. Uh, we can open, you know, cut the concrete in a day or two and just start working on pouring the new footings, foundation, concrete, and then framing it and uh, doing the enclosure itself uh, won't take that long. Uh, we've reached out to some companies to get uh, bids on the storefront aluminum doors uh, with you know, our, our thoughts is, you know, it's, it could take a little while, uh, some glass takes longer than others. So that's, that could contribute to when we start the project and when that's completed. So I'm actually looking at the front here. It does look like they're using the exterior wood at the back as well. So that wraps them. So I think we should have plenty of uh, old brick to use to finish off the edges, do the, do the top part and then infill the other door there and replace that with the window. Yeah, so do you see this, Eric? I just pulled up. Um, Sorry, I was where wrong. They, where they'll need to refill with the old brick. They're gonna okay. here and up here where they've filled in the what's currently a door with a window, but they, they'll they need to fill the top. And then it looks like the back, we just confirmed, is the plan actually is wood yeah. on the back wall. Yeah. As well as on the you sides. Pl plenty of brick. I think it's a good idea to save the old. Yeah, we use it as much brick. as possible. It might be a little hard to clean with a got hard mortar on it, but by the way, be able to get enough to do this. Not it's trying to re replicate the brick as much as possible, and I'm not trying to uh, be an ad for anybody, but trowel trades between Winooski and Essex Junction. Uh, was able to match some hundred year old bricks that we needed and they matched it exactly. Wow. I'll, so I'll... They're probably as good as you're going to find to match what you have. If you take a couple of samples, they mm -hmm. must have a hundred different brick styles in their yard. Yeah. The door Perfect. bricks are easy to match. It's a big brick yard over there. Writing that down. Does anyone have any comments, questions, or suggestions so far? No. Nope. Okay. And the describe the lighting that's going inside. Is that overhead above? Yep, it's a overhead one recessed. I believe I have a material sheet here uh, that specs it out. The res recessed can light with a flood in it. Yeah, that's. Let's see here. Yeah, Should be on that. It's small. It's on here. There's the little. I yes. zoomed in on it, but yeah, it's. Could really read it. Yeah, I, I had to pull it up from the original, but I don't have that on my. Okay, no, right that's now. fine. Yeah, yeah, it's just a surface mount down light, uh, around just around circle light. Uh, it has super low profile. I don't think you're okay. going to see yeah. it other than the lights yeah. in the street. No, that's fine. Okay. You can go ahead and read through the criteria for the project. Exterior design and materials of new construction or, or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Additions and alterations to non-historic, non-contributing structures shall respect and be compatible with exist existing patterns and setbacks found in adjacent buildings. New additions on non-historic and non-contributing structures that overshadow or diminish the historic character of the adjacent contributing structures prohibited. That's acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, 
visual patterns established by the alteration of solid walls and openings, windows and doors in the facade of a building shall create a rhythm acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures. Structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood. Acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha, I'm a yes. Liz. Yes. And Steve says yes. So unanimous, five to nothing in favor. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, because there weren't any tweaks to the plan at all, um, we will get this. We have this. So we just I just need the lumen output on those two lights, those recess lights, the one that's there already and the new one. Um, and then we'll be able to wrap up that administrative site plan report and get this out the door to you. Great. I'll work on that. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at the minutes? Yep. Any comments, questions, suggestions, changes? Yeah, on the February 21st minute, if you take a look on the bad side, it looks like there's a sentence missing. Uh, it goes right from Michael Mulcahy was present to 32 inches high, 32 inches wide. <laughs> Looks like we have a sentence or something missing. Uh yeah, look or the part of the sign. It or the the yeah, I don't know what happened there. Uh I think it's just supposed to be that sign will be. Well, but I will double check on that. Yeah, I think we need to see what exactly I'll, it says. Yep, nope, I'll I'll well, because usually I mean this is um we, there's usually a brief description of the proposal mm -hmm. right um and so i will i will fix that and get it back to you okay on the march 6th minutes um i make a motion to accept them the way they are do i hear a second i'm going to abstain because i wasn't there then all second all in favor of the march the six minutes speak your name Martha? Eric, ben. Eric, it says you were here. Steve? You were there at the March 6th one. The March 6th, yeah, I was there, for, but not for the February one. Yeah, right. But so we're, we're voting on the March the 6th. Oh, so just, okay, well, I vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then that, that makes... We were on February. We jumped ahead. That makes four of us in. So that's approved. Anyone have any other business or anything else to add? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Steve. Martha. Liz. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. See you in April.